we live in a world where um, people are not really willing to read, you know? And because of that, we decided that, you know what, why don't we bring the experts from different fields to come and educate us on what we don't want to read on? Because, I mean, the people that we bring into this show, they come with this huge content and they simplify it into this content in a way that we end up understanding it. In other ways, they're helping us um, um, keep up with the ever-changing dynamics of the world, as we know that it's, it is um, constantly changing, you know. As always, I'm your host, Ndibo Chibase, and welcome to another amazing episode of Complacency Learning. On today's show, guys, I bring in nothing but the best guest, you know. As always, you know that we bring the best of the best of the best people with the best of the best of the best content that helps you help your child make informed career decisions and also help your child change their um, attitude towards learning. In other words, we create a better attitude towards learning. So in today's episode, the amazing guest that we have is currently serving as a country ambassador for South Africa, Unite 2013, and also as an African Youth for Transitional Justice. Um, which is otherwise known as AY4TJ, you know, and at the same time is completing his uh, PhD in international relation and is the first South African to occupy this post. Listen to that. What a profile that he has. Not only um, is he doing that, well, there is are things that he has done that are um, amazing. Um, we talk about things like um, one of the things that he did, um, um, what you call this, was the advisory board member of the World Entrepreneurship and Investment Forum the Prime Minister of Commonwealth Youth Parliament and the first ever African elected Prime Minister of Commonwealth Youth Parliament. And at the University of Pretoria was the first ever Student Representative Council President to have been re-elected. And he was elected as the first ever year student to be elected as the chairperson of the Faculty of Humanities at the University of Pretoria. Ladies and gentlemen, with the content that it comes with, I suggest that you go grab some popcorns, you know, because this is the content not to be missed. This content is just what you need. So stay tuned and enjoy. Hello, David. It's a beautiful day and we're so pleased to have you on today's amazing episode. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It is indeed a pleasure to be here. So thank you so much uh, for the invitation. I look forward to uh, what is uh, promising to be a very brilliant discussion. Wow, I like I like the way you you speak. You know, you speak with confidence, which means that is like you're ready to give us that content that we need. You know, because I mean, I believe that we we live in a space where people don't want to read. And I believe that with the information that you're going to be sharing with us, is going to be helping a lot, especially those that don't like to read, you know? So um, before I actually um, shoot you with the questions that I have, can I ask you to tell us a bit about yourself? Like, what do, what are you mostly known for? Right, I appreciate that. It's, it's a very funny question. Um, someone advised me to Google myself the other day, and I did, and I was... I'm a bit surprised uh, re reading through some of uh, supposed previous activities. A bit about myself. Uh, my name is David Kabwa, uh, currently residing uh, in Pretoria. I am uh, completing a PhD in international relations at the University of Pretoria, uh, where I also got a B Pulsa in political science, an honors degree in international relations, and a master's degree in diplomatic studies, all while maintaining a golden key uh, standard. I had previously served as student representative council uh, president at the University of Pretoria. I was the first president to complete a term as an independent. It means I was elected without a political party. Uh, and I was also the first president to be re-elected for a second term. And a funny fact, when uh, my second term concluded, students started a petition for me to come back for a third term, which got more signatures than the amount of people that had voted in the uh, previous election. But I chose uh, not to, because I feel it would be a bad precedent to change the constitution for one person. I don't think that's good practice. Um, previously, I've served as the prime minister of the Commonwealth Youth Parliament. As the Commonwealth is a country previously colonized by the British. Um, and in that capacity, I was the first African elected uh, to that position. I've served in the Gauteng Youth Sector Parliament as the chairman of the Portfolio Commission on Minimum Wage. And uh, currently, I'm also serving on the African Union Platform for Transitional Justice as it pertains to youth, called the AY for TJ. Where I've been trained as an expert on transitional justice policy by the African Union Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security. Uh, so I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about making a difference. I'm passionate about standing up. And I'm passionate about doing the best I can. Um, I believe it's important to stand up, make your voice heard, 
And uh, that's one of the reasons why a new endeavor that I'm uh, looking into is I have started a new political party called Mo. Uh, so I hope that uh, we get to, to discuss that as we go on. And very, very briefly, uh, off uh, camera, we had spoken a bit about the importance of reading. I did an initiative under the current presidential administration in South Africa, the Ramaphosa administration, called um, the National Reading Initiative, uh, which was hosted by the National Reading Coalition. Please check them out if you get a chance, along with National Library South Africa, where essentially we had a online book review during COVID, where I had a book discussion with uh, the Secretary General, I believe, of the South African Democratic Teachers Union. Um, and uh, we had a discussion on a book by Franz Fernand, The Wretched of the Earth. And it was brilliant seeing the intergenerational dynamic that came out in that discussion as uh, we unpacked the cyclical nature of violence as it permeates into different areas within our society. And a lot of, the, a lot of what was described in that book, uh, we saw in reality during the July unrest in South Africa and what we continue to see when we monitor crime statistics. Uh, so in short, that's who I am, that's what I'm about. And uh, once again, it's a brilliant platform and I'm very uh, honored to be here with you and your listeners. Oh, thank you so much. Eh? It's really good to hear you say that, you know. Like, I mean, I have to say that, yo, that's quite a profile. Eh? <laughs> and now, as you mentioned all these things, I'm wondering, like, when, is it, when, does, when does it get time to do all these things, you know? Like, I mean, being uh, in the space of, like, where you are now, I believe that it, it was never a, what you call this, a smooth road, you know? It's a road that's got full of bumps and stuff like that. And along the way, obviously, people did portray some of their fears to upon you and all that, but you didn't let them define you. Right. So if I may ask you, what's an insult that you received that you are proud of that has actually helped you become <laughs> the person you are today? I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose uh, an insult I've received um, that I'm rather proud of is uh, that I do not take no for an answer. It was given off in a very aggressive way. Like, Man, you never take no mm. for an answer. Can you <laughs> go in a corner somewhere mm. and mm. sit down? And I had received this quite a number of times in my life. I remember in high school, um, I was largely considered uh, one of the uh, learners that had peaked in high school um, because I wanted to do medicine once upon a time because all I wanted to do was help people. I didn't get in the first time, so I chose to upgrade my matric. This means I did matric for a second time, focusing on maths, physics, life science. Mm. Um, and it was uh, during that time where I had received quite a number of insults because I went from being the king of my school to the guy who is repeating school uh, once again. And it was during this time that uh, someone had remarked, or quite a few people had remarked, you know what, you just don't know when to quit. And it wasn't uh, given as a compliment, but I believe that the greatest talent any human being possesses is hard work. And when you're willing to work hard and you're willing to go beyond the point of uh, your limits, there is nothing that can stand in your way. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I like that. <laughs> I like that, really. You know, um, when I ask you to tell us a bit about yourself, you actually mentioned some of the things that you do, of which I believe that most of what you're doing revolves around being, um, I mean, revolves around leadership, right? So around that point, right, so can you describe the turning point in your career? Oh, I, I love that question. And it feeds into the point that I was making just now, a turning point in my career. Um, two, two things that, that happened as a defining moment. Um, the one was, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm very enthusiastic about sports. Um, I did athletics and cross country in high school. And I was determined uh, to run in the South African National Championships as a high school learner. Um, I'll make a very long story short, I trained harder than anyone. I remember we had morning and evening practices. I would show up for both practices. When everyone went home uh, for the morning, I would stay in the afternoon and train and wait till everyone got back and I would train in the evenings as well. I got to the qualifiers and I failed. I did not win. And I remember um, crossing the finish line, looking up and seeing people who I felt um, didn't want it as badly as I do go on win and make it uh, to to nationals that was absolutely soul crushing for me and at that point my thinking was well at least I can focus on getting into the work environment studying and furthering my career so I was so confident that I would get into uh, medicine that it was the only thing that I had applied for so you can imagine my shock when I didn't uh, make it 
So uh, during this time, I remember I went uh, to a school called Abbott's and shout out to Mr. Von Rensburg. If you ever get to see this, he was the principal at the time. My first day in school, I walked straight into his office and I say, hi, my name is David Gabwa and I'd like to speak to your learners. And out of sheer shock, I believe he gave me 30 seconds and I gave an impassioned speech and uh, got a standing ovation. And uh, immediately after that, people were like, yo, man, you're cool. You know, let's go out to drink. And I'm like, okay, cool. But I don't really drink, but, you know, we can have some fun. I said, okay, well, shucks, man. Let's get some weed. We can smoke, man. I'm like, well, I don't really do that either. But, you know, we, we can go out. I don't mind chilling with y'all. Uh, you do you. I do me. It's totally cool. They said, well, F, man, what do you do? I said, well, F, I don't know. I said, well, F, man, you don't swear. I said, no, no, I don't, I don't really swear. So you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't swear. That means you are a liar. And immediately I became ostracized as if um, I, I'm not human. So I would spend most of my time with uh, the cleaning staff and gardeners and such. Now I had experienced kind of three low points. First with my sports, second with my uh, career, my studies, my academics, now thirdly in my social life. And um, it was during this period where I was trying to upgrade my marks that I got invited to the South African Children's Parliament. I was part of a project that uh, looked at the importance of voting as it pertains to children. How does uh, voting affect children if children cannot vote? Um, and it changed the lives of thousands of young people in uh, Gauteng in particular. Looking at that, I realized, you know what? Uh, this is a different way uh, to help people. And that's really where uh, my journey in leadership uh, got started in earnest, um, where I made a decision that I will stand up and my voice will be heard. And I will do my very best to ensure that we are all brought in the circle, that we all have a platform to speak on, and that we all have a contribution to make. And uh, that's something that I've been working on for the last six years and something that I continue to work on. It is why I've decided to start a political party and uh, contest in 2024 in the coming election. And it is why I firmly believe that uh, so long as uh, we are able uh, to turn our uh, failures into our greatest successes, that there is absolutely nothing that can stand in our way. So again, my greatest turning point was when I had realized, you know what, um, for me, there are other ways to help people outside of being a doctor, pursuing that turn into a brilliant lifelong passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're very disciplined and determined, eh? And I see you're one of the people, uh, one of the people that say, you know what, I refuse to take my talent to the grave. Eh? I need to be heard, leave a mark here in this world while I still have a chance to. You know, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, like as I'm talking to you now, like, yo, there's so much more that I'm learning, more like more than you can possibly imagine, actually. All right. So now I just want to focus on, okay, now looking at everything that you have achieved and everything that you're still to achieve, would you say that you love the future or the past more? I uh, think uh, definitely I love the future more. Well, I, I really like these questions. They're very unique. So problems <laughs> on that. Um, I really like the, the future more. And uh, the reason for that is because I find that when we look at the past, we look at the past through the lens of nostalgia. Um, therefore, we remember things fondly uh, for um, how they have impacted us and uh, the high points therein. Um, but our nostalgic lenses often prevent us from looking at the past objectively. I think what is beautiful about the future is that the future is largely still being shaped. It means there is an opportunity to grab the bull by the horns, to use both your hands and to determine and define your own destiny. I think what is brilliant about the future is that the future represents potential. It is the potential of you and I on this platform. It is the potential of every single individual that is following the sound of our voices. It is the potential that allow us to break generational uh, bondages that allow us to create a better life, that allow us to make the determination that no matter how bad things may be right now in our homes, in our communities, in our societies, in our countries, even in our own personal lives, there is always the potential that things can get better. And that's why I'm, I'm a firm believer that um, I prefer much more to be forward looking than uh, dwelling in the past. Now, the past is important because we cannot determine our future without understanding our past. And that is the role I believe that the past plays. But more than anything, I think the future 
is where it's at because the future is where we cross the finish line together. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's nice, eh? Like you did mention that you're starting a political move um, called The Move, but you mind telling us more about it and what inspired you to, to, to actually um, start your own political move? I appreciate that. And I, I, I like that you're getting the, the, the name right. Yes, indeed. So I have started a political party <laughs> called Move. I've undergone the entire process with the IEC. Uh, so it's up, it's running. I encourage you, go check out www.move-za.com. Again, that's www.move-za.com. So move.za, uh, move slash za.com. Um, or you can just check out my social media, um, kind of sharing it on both uh, platforms um, to find out more. Essentially, MOVE is a political platform, a political party that will be contesting uh, at all levels, uh, national, provincial, uh, local, in uh, the general election in South Africa uh, with the next one uh, in 2024. I'll be contesting there. And uh, essentially, it is a platform that focuses on three pillars. That's diligence, determination, and servant leadership. Diligence, uh, much like the point that you alluded to earlier, uh, we need to get to a point in our society where we do not kick the can down the road. I think mm -hmm. uh, part of our political culture has largely been the culture of procrastination. Um, I will do what I can uh, so long as I'm here and, uh, you know, it becomes the next guy's problem to deal with whatever fallout uh, comes from my decisions. I think if we are diligent, um, that uh, we develop the ability to finish what we started or make a plan to make sure what we started is at least finished. Um, second pillar being that of determination. I think it is uh, very important that uh, we do our best not to give up on those who are in need because it is those who are in need who place their trust in us to go forward and to represent them. And the third being servant leadership. And uh, this essentially means that it's important to understand that that the greatest leaders are the most humble servants. When I started in uh, student leadership in particular, um, I had started because there was uh, one political uh, formation um, that was in power and another one that was not. And uh, representatives of one formation um, took a young man uh, who came from very far. He came from KZN to Pretoria. And, uh, you know, this young man had no clue what's going on or what to do. He did not even know where to go. And he was subsequently taken aside by one political uh, formation and brought to uh, the sleeping quarters of the uh, current formation that was in power at the time. And, you know, just kind of left there. And, you know, he told one formation, told the other formation, hey, you guys are the ones in charge now. Here's someone that needs your help. Do something about it. And I just remember thinking to myself, in the back and forth that we have, um, what what happens to those who fall in between the cracks. And all of this is not to say that I have anything against any political formation. I have nothing against any political formation. Um, I think I've worked very well with uh, different political formations. Um, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect. I do think they have a place in South Africa. They work very hard and I do think their contribution should be recognized. My view has simply been that I want to do things differently. It is why when I decided to stand for SRC um, and particularly for the role of president, by the way, I became the first ever second year president also uh, elected. I think I, I am grateful to have had a number of firsts. Uh, when I stood, I stood as an independent. Um, not as a protest against political formations, but simply the belief that I hold the view that we must build bridges for others to be able to walk across. I'm standing on the one side, you're standing at the other side. We need to meet each other at the middle. This is the only way that we can achieve uh, progress. Um, and uh, this essentially as a view that I wanted to take forward into the national stage. Uh, now South Africa has a new legislation that is pending that allows independence to contest for the first time. I'm going to simplify this quite a lot um, uh, to say that uh, the issue with this current legislation is that it essentially uh, gives independence only up to the quota that they need. So let's say you need 10,000 votes to win one seat and you get 20,000 votes. Your additional 10,000 votes get redistributed, meaning someone could have voted for you but their vote might not go directly to you, which for me doesn't make sense in the space of a democracy. And when I found this out, it is one of the things that had pushed me to start my own formation. 
um, so that uh, those who want to give their support will know that, well, your support is going where you want it to go. And um, I'm uh, holding the firm belief that together we can do more uh, because I don't have the world's widest resources. What I do have is the ability to work hard. When I ran for SRC, I shook the hands of about 7,000 students, one-on-one, -on -one, just person after person. And um, I believe that kind of connection was very important. I didn't have the resources. I ran my campaign on a budget of 500 grand, and that was literally just putting petrol in my car to go up and down to uh, different campuses. Um, and this was kind of the feeling and the motivation behind Mo. I believe it is time for South Africans to make a move that it is time for South Africans to lead with us, um, and time for South Africans to move with us. And this is really what has motivated me moving forward. So once again, I do encourage you to check out www.move slash za.com. Yeah, not a problem. I'm going to put that at the bottom of the screen, actually. You know, um, um, I, I really love um, the fact that you, have, you love to help people, you know, because I mean, I also love to help people, which I believe is what's common between us, you know. And also, like I said before, like, you know, uh, being in the space that you're in, where you're very busy, and then you manage to, some way, somehow, you manage to make time to come and share with us um, such an amazing content. It is truly appreciated, I have to say, you know. So, but also looking into that political move, um, like more like into your role, okay? What are the difficulties that you are that you are facing and how, how are you tackling them? I appreciate that. I think um, the biggest difficulty uh, that I'm encountering right now is um, definitely a lack of uh, resources. Um, I think uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. In a couple of months ago, I was uh, up and down getting signatures and such. And I was speaking to about 700 people a day. It was quite exhausting, mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, definitely worth it. And one of the reasons for that was, um, you know, I didn't have uh, the financial capital at the time to boost posts on social media or pay a bunch of uh, volunteers and such. And I do have a great group of people who are assisting me and um, I think they're doing a, a phenomenal job. And I think when you start to see everything that we start putting out there, you'll realize just um, how amazing uh, the, the the people who um, have decided uh, to, to, to make a move and uh, to make a meaningful contribution are. Um, but uh, although this is my uh, greatest challenge at this stage, it is a challenge that can definitely be overcome, much like most challenges that we might experience and encounter in our personal lives can be overcome. Um, I think uh, I'll, I'll mention this. One of the things that I need to do is to pay upwards of about 250,000 Rand just to be eligible to get on the ballot. That's one of the requirements from the IEC, which is the Independent Electoral Commission. It's basically the body that oversees elections in South Africa. Uh, so my plan is to get 10 Rand donations from 30,000 people. Uh, so your donation will go a long way as well. Um, but that's the thinking behind it, that uh, there is a challenge, yes, but there are solutions. And those solutions often involve a wide amount of cooperation. Um, and it is this view and this mentality, I believe, um, that if we can adopt it, and not only as a society, but as a people, there are very few challenges that will be able to overcome us. Mm -hmm. No, my donation is coming your way, definitely. <laughs> and I'm going to encourage others to, to do the same as well. You know, those who can, yes, will, but those who can't, yeah. But I'll send the word out there, you know, because I believe that you're doing a great job, you know, like for you to stand out to help people, not looking at the benefits that you're going to be getting, but looking at their benefits. It's something great, you know, and it tells us that, you know, you are not one of the people that are, uh, what you call this, that only think about themselves. You do think about others as well, you know, and, and also I see the determination in wanting to help um, them make their lives easier. Right. So, um, you said that you went from place to place, like, you know, speaking to like more than 700 people a day, right? So in doing so, was there any uh, failure that embarrassed you? And if so, how did you deal with it? I appreciate that. I think, yes, there's always uh, an inherent amount of failure. Um, and uh, 
for me, uh, one of them has always been the question that, well, dude, you're, you're one guy. Uh, so I, I get this quite often. I mean, yeah, dude, I mean, massive respect that uh, you're, you're uh, making a stand. But um, I have to question, is it really effective to go around and speak to 700 people a day? So that kind of uh, that negativity that we have, and I think it is indicative of the larger apathy that we have in this country. When you look at the numbers, uh, we're a population of upwards of 56 million people, yet around about only 17 million people voted out of 22 million that were registered in the previous election. Um, and I think this indicates that uh, while we've lost a lot of the belief that we need to have, um, when I ran as an independent for uh, SRC president, it was at the time considered political suicide. I had people telling me quite literally every day that, Dave, it's impossible. When I decided to put my hat in the ring for the Commonwealth Parliament, I was told, well, Dave, there has never been an African that has done what you're trying to do, so maybe you should sit down. Um, when... I decided to go and further my studies. Uh, bear in mind that when I didn't get into medicine, there was the belief that, you know, motivation will bring you to the race, but discipline uh, is what gets you across the um, sorry, you kind of like paused and from the word you said belief, from the moment you said belief, you kind of like paused and I didn't hear anything. You only came back now. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's so profound that even yeah. the technology cannot keep up. Come on now. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll summarize sorry. it very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, my, my belief is that uh, we are in a space where a lot of us have lost that belief. We have become very apathetic. And it's important to note that uh, this is where it's important to understand and develop our discipline. A motivation will bring you to the race, but it is discipline that gets you across the finish lines. Mm -hmm. When I look at the possibility, we quite literally have young people who are the biggest contingent of the population. And if young people simply stand up and say, you know what, it is time for our voices to be heard immediately, this is where we start to see the dynamic shift. And this is where we start to see things change. And to all of those who um, would tell me, you know what, uh, I don't think a one-man show is uh, a possibility for success. My response has always been the following. It is not a one-man show. I'm talking to you right now. And if you and I can agree, it becomes a two-man show. And if you convince your friend, it becomes a three-man show. And that's how things grow. But although I was independent, I was not alone. And right now with move. I am not alone, um, and I hold the firm belief, once again, that it is only when we join hands that we build those bridges for all of those who come after us to walk across. It's important that our ambition becomes an ocean, the depths of which you cannot measure. Mm -hmm. That is going to achieve meaningful change. Mm -hmm. No, I like that. I respect that. Actually, heads off, you know? Because I used to I used to think that was a one man show, but then from what you say now, saying that you know the moment people are convinced and stuff, it then goes from a one man show into more people show. Like I really I really um respect the way that you look at things, you know, because I mean you look at things the um different from what um from how most people look at them, you know. I like I like your responses to the uh, what you call this the questions that I'm throwing at you, you know, like as you as you as you give me all this response, I'm thinking to myself, like. What what is it that he like what kind of eye does he have that we don't have, you know, that allows him to see things in such a way? But I mean, like I said, like I'm learning a lot from you. It's 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 really an honor that we have you in today's episode, right? So uh moving on to the next question, I just wanted to ask you, what is the one thing that your successful venture did that you didn't ex um that you didn't expect? That my successful uh, can you repeat venture? that? Um, what is the one oh, thing that your successful venture did yeah, that you didn't expect? I think um, in this, I'd have to, uh, I did mention earlier, I'm working with an amazing group of very talented people who really love uh, our country and society. And among them is a young lady named Stephanie Cookson. And um, this was during my time where I had served as a chairperson of the Humanities Faculty House um, at the University of Pretoria. 
And um, at that stage, I was uh, I was also the first ever first year elected as chair. And by the way, um, the impact that we did was so profound that the dean started a new award in the faculty called the Dean's Award for Students that from uh, my time moving forward has now been awarded to students who are making a meaningful contribution to the faculty. Um, oh. So she approached me with an idea mm. um, about uh, GPV, gender-based violence, which is a matter mm. that's very, very close to my heart. Mm. And I'll make a very long story short, we started an initiative mm. called Hashtag Speak Out UP, mm. which is essentially an advocacy platform to raise awareness as well as provide sensitivity training on matters of gender-based violence. That since trained hundreds of staff members and students. It has a physical office uh, on the campus. It has um, amazing, knowledgeable, hardworking, determined, driven um, staff members who are uh, currently occupying it. And uh, to see how it's it's grown um, in leaps and bounds. I remember when I first showed up, it was simply a logo that existed in a corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking to myself, oh, wow, there's a lot of potential here. Um, so when I got together with Stephanie and uh, we made it happen, um, continually watching its growth as something that's been um, a very pleasant surprise, more so um, everything that I've learned at Endeavor. I've learned how to be a first responder, how to um, assist people who are going through trauma uh, until you can get them to adequate amount of assistance essentially it's good to be a first responder but never take on responsibilities that um, might fall outside of your area of expertise if someone's in trouble always try to get them to a professional for help um, but it's also important to have the skill to assist them until uh, they can get to that place mentally or otherwise and for me i think this has been one of the, the biggest surprises um, but also among the most pleasant that I've been uh, privileged and grateful for. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, wow, I like that, hey? And also seeing how you're leaving a mark, like, yo, like you even made them come with, with uh, what you call this, with an award. I mean, that means that what you're doing is really great, you know, and people are noticing it. I mean, if, if the dean himself even approached you about it, like, yo, wow, to me, if that had happened to me, like I'd be so over the moon, I'm telling you. <laughs> but yeah, so... um. I, I believe that in becoming the person that you are today, um, you didn't just wake up and there's David, just the way you are, you know. There's things, resources that you have used that have actually helped you um, to actually work on developing yourself. So I believe that one of the resources were books, right? So if I may ask, what are the three books that you'd recommend? Oh, wow. Mm. Such a good question. Mm. And to narrow it down to mm. three, um who goodness mm -hmm. uh right i think first book i'd recommend is um, i believe it's called the testimony of steve pico uh, mm -hmm. which is a book written on his um his time put on trial and most people are surprised when i speak with steve pico that i speak about this mm -hmm. book in particular but it's also um, a book that essentially chronicles his last public statements when he was on trial and seeing that kind of intelligence um, one of the book, one of the the lines in in um, in the trial was uh, subsequently used in the movie, I believe, where Denzel Washington was playing Biko, and um, he's in uh, an argument with 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 uh, the lawyer, and the lawyer says, "Well, Mr. Biko, do you not believe you are stoking the flames of conflict? Um, mm. This means you are advocating for violence." And he turns around and says, "Well." Uh, sir, right now you and I are in conflict. Our agree, our uh, ideas do not agree, but I see no violence. And you know those small nuggets of wisdom, I think, are are absolutely peppered through the book. Uh, so um, something that I very, very highly recommend. The second one, I think, something that a lot of us might be familiar with if you studied uh, English in uh, South Africa, uh, in South African high schools in particular, which is To Kill a Mockingbird, which is a brilliant book on the social commentary of uh, the notion of inequality as well as equity um, and the kind of subconscious need to pursue the status quo. So to kill a mockingbird, I place that number two. Number three is the book that I mentioned at the very beginning of this 
uh, this uh, podcast, which is The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fernand. I think these three books in particular. Now, The Wretched of the Earth was very unique about that is um, how, uh, you know, I didn't even, wasn't even aware about um, how deep uh, for non-psychiatry was until mm. I read this book. And um, when he speaks about the cyclical nature of violence, he essentially describes a lot of systemic issues and mm. that I had learned that a system, and, and I'll repeat a phrase one of my mentors once told me, is that a system is a system is a system. Therefore, mm. a system will uh, operate the way that it was designed uh, mm. to, to operate. And... Um, to a large extent, uh, upwards mobility in very many areas in life are largely dependent on whether you know how to navigate a system, you know how to contradict a system, or you know how to dismantle a system. And these three books in particular, I think, have had a very profound effect on my life. Um, mm -hmm. So I, 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 like you mentioned, a thing we have in common definitely is reading, um, uh, particularly when you are able to apply the knowledge you've learned from reading, mm -hmm. uh, you are very dangerous. It's like you've got a nuclear football. Nuclear football is that suitcase where they keep the nuclear codes in America. Mm -hmm. You've got a nuclear football um, mm -hmm. that uh, cannot be challenged because mm -hmm. the level of your thinking improves. And, and um, I'm speaking a lot, but I'll, I'll say this very, very briefly. I was having a discussion with someone about trigonometry uh, that we do in, in high school. They ask the question, you know, I'm never going to be walking down the street looking up mm -hmm. at a tower, and calculating the syntax and cause and mm -hmm. uh, the angles of that tower. And uh, my mm -hmm. response was simple. It's, I don't learn trigonometry. You know? well, this is my view. Mm -hmm. and very subjective. You do not learn trigonometry for the purpose of simply learning trigonometry mm -hmm. uh, or even application purposes in most instances. You learn it because it quite literally mm -hmm. opens new neural mm -hmm. pathways meaning it mm -hmm. opens your brain quite literally to solve problems mm -hmm. in a way that you never would have before and i believe each book that you read assists in this process so you become a more better holistic individual by reading mm -hmm. which is why i am so glad and I, I followed a lot of the content on this platform recently and i'm so glad that that is something that you always make sure to stress so sir my hat off to you because I think it is brilliant work mm -hmm. we're doing and emphasizing the importance of literature. Mm -hmm. Like um, I, I, I really believe that the world is constantly changing, and one way to keep up with it is through learning. Learning can be done through reading, you know, and 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 that's that's one way to keep up with the ever changing dynamics of this changing, uh, ever changing world, you know. So so um, like I said, I'm learning a lot from you. I believe also that our our listeners are going to learn a lot from you. And to those that would like to get a, um to get in touch with you, where can they do that online? I appreciate that. So you can either just uh, mm -hmm. simply look at uh, Move ZA. Uh, you can mm -hmm. check out our website. I'm going to plug it. For, I think this is mm -hmm. the third time. www.move/za.com, uh, mm -hmm. or you can simply do a Google search, David Kabwa, and uh, my information should uh, show up on whatever platform is most convenient to you. So Kabwa, that's K-A-B-W-A. So David Kabwa. And then I would love uh, to, to get in touch. Mm -hmm. um, I, I uh, once uh, met a young man that I connected. So I, I was at a Forbes, you know, Forbes, the the, the money magazine. I was at a Forbes mm -hmm. 10 and 30. I invited my good friend, Dr. Bradley Dalsing. And there I met a crypto uh, millionaire. Um, was visiting from the States. And I remember we were discussing internships and just casually he says, well, how much is an internship in South Africa? And give him the mm -hmm. amount. He says, oh, that's very little. Well, I'd like an intern in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, the amount I gave him was uh, well, much higher than interns actually earn in this country. And I posted mm -hmm. a simple WhatsApp. And uh, uh, someone responded. I connected the two. And the man is now making quite a fair amount of money. Um, so mm -hmm. I always say, you never know what uh, mm -hmm. connections might, might open up. So I love to get in touch with people. I'd love to hear from you, your agreements, and even your disagreements, because I think that criticism can be constructive and I can be built mm -hmm. through. Uh, whether you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. To those that are watching and to those that are listening, I, I promise you, if you follow him, like it's gonna be the best decision of your life because I've done that before. And, and and matter of fact, as I'm as I'm talking now, I'm even thinking of asking him for a cup of coffee, you know, <laughs> so I can learn more from him. So I just want to encourage you guys to actually 
follow him, like, you know, um, contact him, do get in touch with him. There's a lot more to learn. Like he said, we learn from one another. So yeah, please do so, you know. So um, back to you. Um, before I ask you the last question, the one that I'd like to sign off with, um, I just wanted to ask you if maybe there's any question that you would have preferred that I asked that I didn't, or if maybe there's anything that, <clears throat> excuse me, or if maybe there's anything that you would like to share with our listeners, be it a quote or something that you read. I appreciate that. Uh, I suppose I'll share uh, my favorite quote, and it is a quote that I had written um, during my prefect speech in grade 11. And I just remember um, sitting there, I was eating cornflakes um, in the morning, and I'm writing a speech for my prefect, uh, you know, presentation that was taking place that morning. I wrote the following statement which I consider a maxim for my life. And if you ever hear me speak on a public sp uh, platform, best believe you will hear these words at some point. And that is that we possess the capacity and the capability to loosen the shackles of mediocrity that have bound so many to complacency. So every day we should give our best. And your best today may not feel as good as your best yesterday, but so long as you have given your best, it is something to be proud of. And this is something I believe wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. They say you can't regret it at the end of the day if only you were trying. So yeah. So um yeah. Yeah, so the question that I'd like to close off with is um it has to do with learning. Like, you know, like earlier we mentioned that okay now, um to keep up with the ever-changing dynamics of the world, one needs to learn. Right. Learning it's not only reading, it's 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 acquired in different ways, you know. So I just wanted to ask you, um, what do you think of learning? I mean, what does learning mean to you? Uh, I think that's one of my favorite questions so far. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to touch on the notion and the concept of pedagogy. So pedagogy is basically a medium of instruction. It is how you teach. Mm -hmm. For example, if I teach by telling stories, then you could call my pedagogy storytelling. So mm -hmm. it sounds like a big word, but it's very uh, simple. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I do in my uh, spare time is I'm an assistant uh, lecturer, right? um, simply because I just love learning and I love helping others learn. Um, and for me, one life-changing experience was discovering what experiential learning is. I think a lot of us become discouraged because we do not fit a particular mold. Um, a lot of our education systems simply tell us, well, if you don't perform in this way, then perhaps you are lacking in some areas. I always say it's not that you're lacking, it's that perhaps you haven't found your area. Uh, so I had learned about experiential learning through a program I did with the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, otherwise known as DERCO. And mm -hmm. if you know anything about international relations and you're in South Africa, you will consider DERCO a pretty big deal. And mm -hmm. here I um, learned about different kinds of diplomacy. It's one of the reasons why I chose to do my master's in diplomatic studies. Um, mm -hmm. So we had an experiential learning program where we spent a week with uh, the very best of the best South African diplomats. And I learned everything from economic diplomacy to protocol to scientific diplomacy. For example, you might have heard of BTS, that big pop group, uh, mm -hmm. K-pop group. Um, mm -hmm. They uh, once shut down the entire United Nations. Imagine making every world leader wait so that you can show up in a hall and do a concert. And I was just thinking, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. up, I looked it up and I had realized they are cultural envoys. So an envoy means mm -hmm. someone who is sent to someone else. Mm -hmm. They're cultural. They were at the time cultural envoys of the South Korean president. Um, so they were engaging in a new kind of diplomacy. And these were things that I had learned through experiential learning, which is the learning that happens through experience, either your experience or someone else's mm -hmm. experience. Um, and I think uh, when we can... Uh, change our approach, our mindset, our thinking, and our perception of learning. Mm. This is where true learning takes place. That is one of the most powerful things a human being can do. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you so much Jay, for that. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, when I saw this post, um, there's this um, the post that was shared by University of Pretoria about um, what you call this, congratulating you for the two terms that you served in the SRC. And also, you did mention that you um completing the uh, PhD in um, international relations, and then also like one of our mutual um, what you call this connection, um, innocent Mushaisan. I don't know if you know him. It's like uh, you can never yes. expect any. 
like he was here um on uh, one of the episodes, you know. So he said that you can never expect anything less from David. I'm like, what? Wow, I'm really looking forward to this. Eh? Like, like now I see what he meant when he said that because I mean all this information that you've given us. I mean, you've you've it's more like you've shown a different um um spotlight in a different angle, you know. So and I really and truly appreciate that, you know. And also, like I said, living in a busy time um that we're in right now, I know it's hard to actually sit and and try and educate people or try and give people the content that they need, you know. But the fact that you did it, I really appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you. I just don't know how to thank you enough, but I, I really want to say thank you. And also as I say that I truly and respectfully I'm looking forward to a continued relationship. I feel uh, exactly the same. I'm grateful. Uh, for those watching this, please go check out uh, the YouTube channel, Complacency Learning, uh, and uh, have a really good time there. I think you'll learn quite a bit. Um, I, I love how you bring guests who can take a lot of information and synthesize it. It saves me a lot of time. I was learning about, we discussed this before we went live. It was... Uh, Cloud data mining. So I'm grateful. I look forward to our relationship as well. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for having me on this platform. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And 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 I wish you all the best in um in and um what you call this the political moves. Um move. Yes, yeah, so and um, I really want to say to you that you got my support and I'm going to send through my donation like that you can always count on, you know. And I'm looking forward to actually meeting you in person. <laughs> I look forward yeah. to that. It's a small world and let's make it, it is. smaller. Thank you once again. Thank you. And please do have yourself a lovely evening. I appreciate that. Same to you. All right. All right, thank you. Cheers, man. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching all the way till the end. We can all agree that the content that was shared by David is truly an amazing content. And I believe that it's going to help a lot of us, you know, see things in a different way. And looking at the things that he has achieved, we can see that he's a, he's a, he's an, um, he's a determined individual who's actually willing to change the world for better. And as he does so, please let us, let us support him as best as we can. And also, please do get in touch with him at the, uh, with the other details provided at the bottom of the screen. And in doing so, please remember to like and subscribe so you do not miss a single episode that we post, you know, because as you know, we bring you nothing but the best of the best contents that you need. So ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more content to come.